Welcome back to the Navy Sports Magazine. It's presented by the Navy Federal Credit Union. Time to talk some Navy baseball with Colin Jones. And Colin, just for you guys to leave Lewisburg picking up a victory, uh, the value of getting a win and trying to get some momentum started right now for you guys as a baseball team. Yeah, so it was a, a pretty good weekend at Bucknell, four-game series. We dropped the first three, which is a little rough. They were uh, they were hitting incredibly well. They were, they were kind of just hitting everything that we – through as pitchers so it took a lot and then uh in that, that game four we had some good pitching come out of the gate uh just kind of were able to shut the door eventually right now as a team and certainly as a pitching staff you know how much of this is a work in progress because as we know this isn't like the major leagues or even the minor leagues where you guys are spending five six hours a day polishing your craft out there in the bullpen but how much of this is still a work in progress right now as you all are just getting into Patriot League play? Yeah, we, we, we never stop working. It's always going to be a work in progress every single day. And so, you know, when we get out there after school and we have an hour and a half, two hours to put in work, it, it, the, uh, the biggest thing is just the intent and the intensity. So we're working hard every second of practice. We get in there and we, we get our work in. But uh, I'd be lying if I said there wasn't some, some issues when it comes to just us being young and us lacking experience. And so we, we don't have that many older guys in the staff that have that experience. And so it's really, really been good to see the freshmen and sophomore sophomores coming in in tight spots and then being able to kind of accrue that experience that they're ready, you know, more and more ready, I should say, like every time they go out on the mound. Do you feel a sense of, I don't know if responsibility is the right word, but as an older player, you know, this institution is about providing leadership and, and someone who's at least been through some of these battles now. Do you find a sense of trying to lead, especially down there in that bullpen? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely there. We have, you know, three senior pitchers, me, Dalton, and Trent. And I think that it's important to us to lead these younger guys because, I mean, I, I'd say that, you know, the, the older guys when I was a plebe and, and when I was a sophomore were definitely very influential, you know, in my my development as a pitcher, but then also just as a person, as a man. Um, it, it's I just, I just want to instill in the younger guys that, you know, with the confidence and with the intent and with this, the, the passion that comes for the game and just, just being a leader, um, it, it's important to develop, you know, every single day and not, and not become stagnant because like once you become stagnant, you almost just take a step back instead of a step forward. No doubt about that. How else, you mentioned time too, and with the younger players, how much of it is about teaching them being efficient in their work because that work window daily is as limited as it is? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, no doubt. It's, it's like, I guess, as pitchers, even more, though, more so than position players, you know, the hitters is, is we get in there and we we don't have um, unlimited throws in a given day, like the, the arm gets tired, the arm starts hurting, you know. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, it's just it's just important to get in there. And if you, if you if you want to throw the ball 30 times in a given day, you want to make every single throw count. You want to keep developing the change up, keep developing like, you know, the break and ball and then, and then fastball command are kind of the fastball command is probably the biggest tenant when it comes to college pitching, because no matter what you do, if you don't throw strikes, you just, you just can't pitch at this level. That's definitely important. How hard is it though? Because having watched this game for a long time, the obviously the bat technology, the quality of the players you're seeing all the time, you guys play a tremendous schedule. Uh, on a yearly basis, just how tough is it right now for the college pitcher to execute in this game? Because, you know, as you mentioned, you can throw strikes, but sometimes the quality of the batter right now is at an all-time high in this game. That's no kidding, but the, I guess the cool thing about baseball, the cool thing about being a pitcher is the, the best hitters hit 300. So seven out of 10 times, they still fail. Right. They still get themselves out, whether they, you know, they strike out or they ground out or they fly out. So, that, that is kind of the incentive as a pitcher is just that you, you can throw strikes and sure they're going to hit some balls hard, but you know, most of the time they hit balls at people, which is, you know, convenient, especially with as good of a defense as we have this year, we have a super solid infield and outfield. And so, uh, you know, with, with them behind me as a pitcher, it's definitely a big help without a doubt. I was going to say, I know a pitcher doesn't mind an atom ball uh, every now and then the mentality of a relief pitcher, you've spent a ton of time in that role here uh, at the Academy. What are the necessary things you find to being successful 
as a relief pitcher because you never know when that moment may come during the course of the game uh, that your staff may call on you. Yeah, I love it. I eat it up every time. You're, you're sitting there and you're you're kind of anticipating a little bit. You you kind of know when you're throwing. We get like a little sheet that says what relief pitchers are up, like they are available to pitch that day versus the pitchers that are down that aren't going to throw that day. And so you have, you have a little idea of when coach might give you the call, and then you just you just sit there and you're observing the game, and then all of a sudden you look down and and someone's like Jonesy, get hot, and then I'm sprinting to the bullpen, and it, and I love it because it's so it's just a big. Uh, big testosterone but it's, 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 it's all about you know the energy and the intent and the intensity that you have to come in there and then to like to, to be very very focused on your task which is get out of the inning if you're in a tough spot or put a zero up on the scoreboard and not let the other, other team score so i mean i i love it just because because of the intensity that you don't always see on the starter side you know that the starter is there for longevity they're supposed to put up a lot of zeros and they're supposed to throw, you know, 100 pitches compared to a reliever where you're going in there and you might only throw the ball, you know, 12. You might you might only throw 12 balls just to get you out of the inning. And so it, I, I love that piece of it because it is so intense. What is the mindset coming out of the bullpen in a situation like that? Because as we've seen in competitive sports all the time, some players thrive in, in pressure situations. For you, as you mentioned, you may come into the middle of an inning. There may be bases loaded, two guys on, whatever the situation. To you, what have you found to help get you through those types of pressure situations? Keep the breathing, I'm sure, at you know a minimum, uh, if you possibly can, as you tow the rubber there. Yeah, no, no doubt. It, it's there's definitely a lot of pressure and. You know, you want to you want to do well, but the, the biggest thing is you're you're carrying that flag. So there's always a flag on the mound, and I've heard this this used uh, from our old pitching coach Bobby Applegate, who's no longer uh, at Navy. But he always said like someone's always got to carry the flag. The pitcher on the mound carries the flag, and so once once he's done carrying the flag and he's you know getting pulled out because he got in a tough spot or his pitch count is up or whatever, that relief pitcher that come in, that comes in after him like has to continue to carry the flag for the team. Because I mean when you're when you're up there on the mound, you you are in control of the game. You know, you you control the pace of play. You control what happens. You know, in the hit in the batting box, and so I guess it's just it's it's very important to to, to have that intensity and to have that focus. But at the same time, you can't let your emotions get the best. You got to be pretty calm, cool, and collected the whole time. You know, as a, a guy that obviously you know when when you when you play this game at the Division One level, I'm sure baseball's been an important part. Uh, of your life growing up when did you know that you know you might have the opportunity maybe the skill set um, that you could contribute uh, at the division one level in this sport I don't know I, I guess well the good the good you know being a tall lefty made a little little bit easier on me because I guess <laughs> they always say the lefty pitchers are a commodity in baseball and whether or not that, that's true I don't know um, but I was definitely you know blessed with the opportunity to get to be a you know a lefty with a tall frame and so that definitely helped and so I think my well, freshman sophomore year of high school and you know I, I was throwing the ball pretty well and I was um, playing on my high school baseball team but as well doing the whole showcase baseball thing during the summer you know where you in my case going all over the southeast you know playing in different tournaments and I was able to compete at that level and so you know I was hopeful and, and blessed the opportunity to come to Navy and compete here. I was going to say I think maybe outside of you know Texas and California the southeast probably uh, as big an area uh, and a competitive an area you know playing against good competition like that you know, how much did that test your skills, uh, as you mentioned, especially in the showcase? I mean, you show up at a showcase and there's hundreds of guys sometimes at a complex uh, playing in those things on a particular week or weekend. No, no doubt. It was, it was definitely a big step up just, you know, as as a you know, 16, 17 year old high schooler. Um, I went to a very, very small high school. I only graduated with 99 other kids in my class. So we were used to playing pretty small private schools in the Memphis, Tennessee area. And so during the summers when I was on a showcase team, we were traveling all over, you know, Mississippi, Arkansas, Alabama, Florida. And we were, we were playing these teams that were full of kids that were committed to big, you know, power five ACC and then um, SEC schools. And so you definitely, you definitely have to pick up a little bit. And then, you know, luckily due to, probably largely my frame and then 
I had good fastball command and a pretty good breaking ball that kind of helped me um, compete against that level. For, for you, what, what constitutes success in your mind, especially a, a, as a relief pitcher? What makes you walk off the mound going, yeah, I, I, I was able to do my job and, and do it well on a particular occasion? Well, it varies a lot pitcher to pitcher. I think for me personally is I, I just hate seeing runners on base. I hate walking people and I hate giving up hits. And so if I'm sitting there and I, I love coming in the tight spot, and then getting out of the inning, not letting anybody score, and then coming out the next inning, and then immediately putting up a zero on the board, going three up, three down. That's kind of what probably I equate success to as a reliever. Coming up this weekend, obviously, uh, a chance to compete uh, against a, a big-time rival uh, coming up this weekend. How do you manage to embrace the excitement of that rivalry, but at the same time, you know, temper the emotions to make sure – that you can perform within yourself and, and not kind of have to chase it a little bit uh, if you're too excited out there. Yeah, I think I think if I hit on a little bit earlier when, I'm just, when I was talking about experience. And so um, as one of the guys on the pitching staff that has a, a, probably more innings than a fair amount of the other guys, younger, you know, freshmen and sophomores, it's just – it's an, it's important to use use that energy you know use that intensity to fuel your success but you you can't you have to stay within your own head because if you go out there and your adrenaline's pumping and you're just freaking out you're, you're probably not gonna throw a strike you're you're gonna like you're gonna you're gonna fall off of the you know the tenets that pitching is built on you know extension follow through and and kind of staying within yourself and you have to use use the energy but you also can't like you can't let it you know, add too much fuel to the fire, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I imagine, too, I mean, you know, coaches talk about fundamentals, and, and certainly pitching and mechanics is is everything. To be able to focus on that pitch after pitch, is that kind of what separates guys like you and your teammates and others who, you know, get to this level and those who certainly wished for that but don't quite make it to this level? No, absolutely. And, and I mean, it's not to say that I do it perfectly every time because I absolutely don't. There's been times when I've gone out there and, and you know, gotten shelled, <laughs> as, as we say. But yeah, no, there, there definitely there definitely is a piece of that when it just, you know, that, that separates, you know, I guess the, the pitchers on the Navy baseball team, for instance, compared to maybe what they were in high school is because most of the guys, you know, that came here, they came in as, you know, the big time starting pitcher of their high school. And then they come here and they might have to fall into a different role. And that's it's kind of what's cool about college baseball is that I think anybody could can compete. Anybody can get in there and, and do the job if they have that right mindset and that right intent. Can you explain to people what the Army Navy rivalry is like? Oh man. It, it's something. It's something else. It's 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 different because it's just I mean, I, people people don't like this, but I think it's the greatest rivalry in all the sports, you know. And I grew up saying that as, a, as a, I'm a North Carolina fan, so, you know, North Carolina, North Carolina Duke's close to my heart as well. But it's just, it's so cool because it, it's just the brotherhood. It's it's everything that it stands for. And so, I mean, I, my greatest memories is, what one of my great memories is, was beating Air Force early this year. That was awesome. And then beating Army last year. And hopefully we can beat them, you know, when we play them it's two games this weekend. And there's just, there's just something to say about, you know, the, the closeness and the, just the community of it, um, because it's just our experience at school is just is just so different. I'll, I'll wake up and I'll have watch in the morning where I'm, I'm sitting there with like a little a book talking or just standing there looking out for people. And then the next period, I'll have a swim test and then I'll have, you know, some sort of meeting when it comes to like leadership or whatever. And then, and then I'll have classes and then I'll, then I'll go to the baseball field and I'll play army. It's just, it's a very, very unique experience. And because they're doing the exact same things, you know, just on the army side. And then, so I love the rivalry and it's just, it's, it's so cool being a part of something like that because it's so much bigger than ourselves, you know? Yeah, no doubt about it. I imagine it was probably a good thing you were in uniform on Saturday and not watching Carolina blow that 25 point lead uh, in regulation there for a moment on Saturday. Yeah, I don't really want to talk about it. It's a little rough. <laughs> hey, but they they did win the game, though. They did. They That's pulled it the out. Important thing. 
They pulled Hubert, it out. Absolutely. Hubert's headed to the Sweet 16. Colin, awesome stuff, man. Appreciate you taking some time for us this morning. We look forward to seeing you guys uh, this weekend. Continued success with the rest of the year. Awesome. Thank you for your time. Have a good one.